It's Friday already, February 3rd. We're into the first week of February, and at least three days worth. And uh, my goodness, the time is going by quickly. And off we go. No football this weekend, but uh, we certainly will have a lot of basketball, uh, college basketball on. But in any case, today I wanted to talk about a question I get asked all the time. And it's, how do we move our thinking or how do we remove things that we're studying for exams or tests or presentations or uh, interviews that we are having with uh, companies and finding a job? How do we move our information in our head from sh short term to long term memory so it's there when I need it and it's present when I need to be able to utilize it uh, at a point in time? And I get asked that question all the time and it's amazing that people this think that cramming information into their head in these extensive study periods gets them to be totally prepared for an exam or a test or a presentation they're giving or an interview that they're having with a new potential boss. And it brings me back to years ago, a study I read where they took the top uh, graded students in Harvard and uh, they tested them on the same material 30 days after they passed their exams uh, for their, uh, their college courses. And what was interesting about it <laughs> is most of them that had gotten A's on the test 30 days prior flunked the test 30 days later. So we passed the test. Now, how would you like your doctor to go to a medical school and and then go take a test and 30 days later, they're, they're touching you or doing something to diagnose and they have forgotten. So how do they train doctors? What are the, the training programs and the internships, the hands-on experiences that they've got to go through to ensure that they've got techniques and then what do they have to go through to retain information? So it's just more than a cram session. It's how do we go through what we call a cycle of memory rhythms and what are the proper ways that one can learn so that things that we're reading today that we want to retain or things that we're learning in terms of our skills, we can retain them. And what's the repetition? What's the best cycle that we go through that match the way our brain is going to absorb uh, and begin to retain it so that 30 days later we're not flunking something that's important to us or not flunking a test. So what are those rhythms? And so what are some of the factors that come into play with those rhythms? So it's interesting as we go through the work we've done in putting together our Maximum Memory Mastery online course, the things that we've learned that we teach people that really make a huge difference in their life. And I say life, it'd be it on personal things they're doing with community projects or community uh, interventions they're a part of or professional ones or tests that they've got to take or presentations they're giving that are impactful that make a difference in their lives and be a community professional business. And so what's the first thing you got to think about is when in what amount of time do I begin this process when I'm trying to retain something for long term. And so the first thing that always comes to mind is study cycle. So as you're reading, so as you're reading something, okay, you're going to read something. I'm always reading. In fact, here I was reading last evening the latest issue of the Harvard Health Letter. The Harvard Health Letter had some really fabulous things uh, that are important. One on a personal level, how to keep information in check. Another one is how to bring a fuzzy memory back into focus. And then most, how, what's keeping you from getting a good night's sleep? I mean, this this was a jackpot issue. This is the February issue of the Harvard Health Letter. I mean, this one not like a stuff in it. And now I want to retain it. So what do I do? Well, the first thing I do is I take it in chunks where I'm focused. I'm I'm not watching TV. I'm not watching the the latest uh, sports event. I'm not watching a basketball game. But I'm focused because I want to retain the information that I was reading last evening. So as I'm reading through it and saying, bring your memory into focus, it then got me starting to think about memory rhythm. So how the first thing I always think about is, okay, what, how long should a study period be? And what people think, especially when they go to college and they've learned these sessions, they're called all night cram sessions and they're going to take caffeine and they're going to be drinking, taking highs. They're going to, oh, I'm going to stay awake all night because the exam is tomorrow and they just cram. And that is not brain friendly, as I like to say people. Cramming in hourly chunks, multi-hourly chunks, 
probably the worst thing you can do for long-term memory. In fact, the more and more research suggests 40 to 50 minute study periods broken up are far better because you get these cycles where you're learning and learning and learning and then your brain says, I need to take a break. And it starts to wander off. It goes in the daydream somewhere else. It takes its own rest, whether you know it or not. It's out there parked somewhere else. And it's just thinking about some other experience. Hey, what am I going to do next weekend? Or what am I doing with the game tonight? Or what? And it just goes away. So I recommend that people, when they're looking to move from short to long-term memory, they need to take their learning periods into 40 to 50 minute chunks. And then give themselves at least a five minute break. And that five minute break should not go and do something stressful. It should not be a, a, something for five minutes that you do that's going to tax and put extra stress on your brain. It's a five minute break. Just go take a walk somewhere. Go to take your bathroom, go get a cup of, uh, of uh, water or a glass of water. Just take a break where it's, your brain is just kind of relaxing. And then come back in the first five minutes of your return for your next 40 to 50 minute segment just do a quick review and maybe you jot it down. Boy, if you jot quick notes back, what did you learn in that last 40 to 50 minute period of time? What were some of the key points? Maybe you want to glance at something you might have created like a mind map or just keyword notes and things. And you want to just take those first few minutes to say, okay, let me come back in, grow those branches and water them. And now look at the, the next new learning period. So now let's go take the next learning period, 40 to 50 minutes. And let's add to what we've learned in the first. And just do that in a repetitious way in a you know, four to five hour learning period. Don't cram it into, oh my, God, my whole day is just going to be suffering and torturing myself. A couple of 40 to 50 minute learning periods, you've linked it. Now, again, it requires you to plan your learning, especially if it's important. But you've got to plan it. You've got to be intentional about it. You need to be focused. Now, what are you doing? You're letting that go. You, you've done your study. I found that looking at this, as I've done the research on this, looking at it before bedtime, and I say bedtime is look at it in the 6 to 8 p.m. hour. And just glance at your notes. And now go to bed after TV or whatever you've watched or whatever you've enjoyed and gone out for dinner. And go to bed and get up the next day in 24-hour cycle and just review those notes a couple of minutes. And now you can enter your next study period, 40 to 50 minutes, a couple of those. And you repeat that for the next week. At the end of the week, you want to look at, so what if I absorb this week? So your next rhythm is one week later. So one week after you've put this aside, you now want to go through it and you want to be reviewing it. You want to take it and say, okay, what if I, what if I learn? What is, what's in there and what can I do with that? And then you want to do it another week later. And then you get to the point where after you've done the day and you've done the week and you've done the month, my goodness, think about what I learned a month ago. Let me bring that back. And so whenever I'm coaching people and trying to pass professional exams, I clearly stay away from what I call the cram sessions. I'm not looking to do any cram sessions with anybody. And then from the, that's a spam call. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. I don't know what we do about spam calls anymore, but they do come and they come. But so now I want to go and, and spray, space out the learning and it takes a strategy. So currently working with someone who's going to be taking a, a significant exam and we've actually planned this out over three months. And we've planned the study days and when we're learning something new, when we're going to be reviewing. And we've broken it into eight significant modules of study, pre-test, post-test. I mean, we've done the whole nine yards. But we've used memory rhythms in the spacing and building the strategy for the study period. And uh, confident this, this gentleman is going to ace out his exam. He is going to get it to be a professional accreditation and he's going to smoke this thing and knock it out of the park. And it's who looks at memory rhythms and focus as a way of passing exams that are important if we want to shift from short term to long term. And 
I cannot imagine the amount of wasted hours that people put into cramming just for the purposes of passing a, an imminent exam or test and then forgetting what they learned within 30 days. And it's the same thing we talk about when we remember names and faces. Separate topic for another day, but names and faces. We meet somebody, oh, we got their name, we may use it, and then off we go. We drift into the sunset, and a month later we see that person, and we can't, don't have a clue uh, what their name is. In any case, have a good weekend. That's my lesson for today. Uh, and uh, I hope you can remember... <laughs> Take one or two of the points in today's lesson and think about your next study session. When is, when is your next period of time where you're going to be studying for something uh, for work or a presentation and give yourself 40 to 50 minute times, study it, go away for a few, come back and study it again, do another segment, study it, go away, study that, and then go to bed you know, or study it in the 6 to 8 p.m. hour Go to bed and have a good night. Do something relaxing. Let that stuff go. You'll be amazed at what your brain is doing during your sleep hours. And I'm not going to get into the sleep times of when you get down into that deep level of sleep where these things are integrated, but they are. And just let it be natural. Don't, oh God, I got to be so crazy about this. I got to be so analytical. Just let it go and see what happens in terms of your ability to move information that's important to you from short term to long term memory. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here live with Tony on Monday. Have a good one, and hopefully your college and pro teams are playing basketball this weekend and get the results that you want them to get.